One of the most common things that people have questions about when starting with Kivi is how they reference other widgets inside of their app. So say for example, they've got this app here um, and they've got a text input on the left and they write something in here and they wanna click the button and it should automatically populate the text and a label somewhere else in their app. Um, this is really simple to do, but uh, there's always a lot of questions about it. So today I'm gonna to cover how to reference widgets in your app using IDs. And I'll go over a couple examples. All right, so in my project, I've got this main.py file right here, which is just a blank app for now. And I've got this uh, function that's set up for me to write uh, some logic in, but nothing is in there yet. And I have my main.kv file, which is completely blank. So let's go ahead and start by making my little user interface. I'll start with just a grid layout. And I'll have one row, so rows one. And let me throw in a text input. And now the main point of this video, I'm going to give this text input something called an ID. And I'll call it just my text input. IDs are what let you reference widgets in Kibi. So because I've given my text input an ID, now I'm able to reference this text input through some sort of like Python logic, or I can also do it in KV code. And I'll show both, uh, both situations in just a moment. Okay, when you're writing an ID, make sure you don't put quotes here. This is not a string, and if you put quotes, it'll just confuse you later on. So I'll just leave it like that. And then I'll throw in a button here, and I'll say on release. So whenever the button's clicked, I wanna call app.setText. That's that dummy function that I have right here. Nothing is in there yet. And then the last thing to do is add a label. And I'll have this be uh, nothing yet in the text. And because I need to reference the label in my uh, function set text, I have to give my label another ID. So I'll call it my label. It can be whatever you like. Um, just make sure you don't have strings in there, or the quotes. Okay, so if I run my app now, you'll see I've got this user interface that I showed earlier, but nothing happens because there's no logic in the button, or in the button's function. So let's go write that logic set text. Okay, the first thing you need to do is get a reference to your text input. All right, so I'll say, I'll call it my text input, is, and then I reference my uh, self.root.ids.mytextInput. So what is this saying? Self refers to the main app class, okay, right here. Root refers to the root widget of my app, and that's the grid layout here. So I reference my grid layout right now, and now I'm getting all the IDs that are underneath my grid layout, or underneath my root widget. So that's basically returning a special sort of list um, that has uh, this this value in there and also this value and now I'm taking the my text input value from that special list So now I have a reference to my text input widget and now I need get a reference to your label So I'll say my label is same thing self dot root dot IDs dot my label and now I can just say my label dot text is my text input Dot text and that's all that we have to do so if I run my app now I type something here like foobar I press the button and there you go I've automatically updated um, the labels text so it's really not too bad and it um, once you start getting used to it it's really intuitive there's a couple different things you could do here um, you could instead of typing dot my label you can also use uh, an index notation so I could write my label in here kind of like a dictionary okay so it, it, it almost is a dictionary, but it's a little bit special because you can uh, use this method too of referencing your widget. So if I run this and I type something again, there you go. So I've showed both ways of um, using the IDs sort of attribute here of your root widget. Um, another thing to do maybe is we will reference the text inputs text in KV. And actually, I don't even need to have any function in Python at all. What I could do is reference my label. So I'll say my label dot text equals my text input dot text. And now I don't even need this function here. I could, I could get rid of it. Maybe I will. And I'll run. And if I type something here, I press the button and automatically it updates. So that's a lot quicker. Um, and let's go ahead and explain exactly what's going on there. So anytime I click my button, I'm getting a reference to my label widget. So anytime you have an ID, 
um, you can reference it right in KV directly. It knows what you're talking about. So I'm referencing this ID right here, and I'm changing the text attribute of the label, which is basically this. And what I want to change it to is I've got another ID here. So just my text input, and I'm taking the text from the text input. So that's all there is to it. It's very easy, very simple, straightforward. Um, one more case that I want to cover is, let's say I've declared a custom widget. So I'll call it like special grid layout. And it inherits from a normal grid layout. And okay, it calls one. Maybe I have like a label inside of here and I'll call it, or I'll give it some text that says special label. And I'm giving this guy an ID. I'll call him a special label. Now, let me uh, remove this label and I'll replace him with my special grid layout. Okay, so basically what I want to demonstrate here is if you've got um, your custom class that's subclassing, I don't know, any other kind of widget, and you've got some widgets inside of your custom class, you can give them IDs too, but it's just a little bit more complicated to reference them. Um, right now, the way to do this is I have to give my special grid layout an ID, so I'll call it like special grid layout. And in KV, I could do something very similar here, but instead of changing my label, that's not what I need anymore. I want to change special grid layout dot IDs dot special label dot text. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting a reference to my special grid layout. And I'm getting all of the IDs inside of there. And so this is now available to me because this ID is inside of my special grid layout. And now I'm changing the ID uh, or I'm changing the text of whatever widget has this special label ID, which is right there. So if I run this again, you can see there's my special label. If I type something in here, click the button, I've updated it. Okay, let me go do it in Python. So I will say maybe app.set text um, and I'll pass my text input dot text as a uh, as an argument there so I don't need to reference my text input anymore so let's def set text and now I'm taking the text okay and self dot root dot IDs dot special grid layout dot IDs dot special label dot text, okay, it's a little bit long-winded, equals text. Let's see if I did that right. Special grid layout, yep, that's right. And then dot IDs, dot special label, dot ID, special label, perfect. Okay, I'll run this one more time, and we'll see that it does the same thing. Click the button, and there you go, it's updated. One last little trick to leave you guys with is it's really handy, uh, sort of like for your debugging. You can just print self.root.ids and then you'll see everything that you have access to and maybe you're thinking uh, like I can't I can't get access to my to my ID why is that well you can print root.ids and you'll see exactly what you have access to and maybe you'll be like oh that's because uh, this one ID I want to reference is inside of uh, some subclass or something so there you go I printed uh, self.root.ids and what it prints out is this dictionary special dictionary um, with my text input, so you can see that's one of the IDs in root. Special grid layout is the other ID in root. And you can see there's nothing else. So root doesn't know immediately about this special label. That's why you have to reference the special grid layout from root, and then the special label from your special grid layout. Okay, I think I've covered uh, at least most of the use cases, all the ones that I've used in my personal app development. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you guys, and stay tuned for more videos. Alright, thanks for watching.